Welcome to this Killick Explains video and welcome to part one of a three-part series on investing catchphrases. So what I'm going to aim to cover is five catchphrases per video, part one, part two, part three, that's 15 in total. And what essentially we're aiming to do is to just say these catchphrases appear everywhere, uh, in newspapers, in books, uh, on websites. So what are they? and how straightforward are they to use? And frankly, are they still relevant? Because some of them weren't created yesterday. So with no more ado, here come five, five more in part two, five more in part three. So let's start with buy on the dips. Now the logic is sort of sound. It's saying, if you like, if a share was 10% more expensive yesterday than it is today, and you still like it, why wouldn't you buy it 10% cheaper? In other words, if you're building a position or looking to add to a position, why wouldn't you take advantage of the market's inevitable gyrations? And that logic is reasonably sound, but you have to be careful. I, many, many years ago, bought a share called Jarvis on the dips. You may not have heard it, this is decades, decades ago. And as it dipped, I bought more. And the problem was the fact had actually changed. I wasn't topping up an existing solid position using the same criteria as when I started. I was buying into what had become a bit of a dud. So I bought on the dips, bought on the dips, bought on the dips. When the company went bust and the share price went to zero, even I stopped buying on the dips. All right. So the danger is twofold. Number one, you lose sight of the fact that the facts have changed. So the share price isn't dipping, it's sort of crashing, if you like. And secondly, do not use this as an excuse to do market timing, about which more in a later section. Number two, the trend is your friend. Now, that is one way of saying that people act in herds, they follow each other, not just in investing, all right? And momentum is therefore important. It's the idea that uh, what Alan Greenspan once called Federal Reserve Chairman, irrational exuberance will keep the market rising for longer than it should. And equally, pessimism, once it takes hold, can drive shares down for a lot longer than the fundamentals suggest. So yes, to a degree, take advantage of momentum. You know, run winners, but do make sure that you rebalance and you don't get carried away. In other words, keep an eye on how diversified you are and be careful to make sure that in running a winner, you don't end up with a sort of distorted portfolio. All right, the next one is calendar phrases, if you like. And I'm gonna mention one, but there's another one I could also throw out. So sell in May and go away is the big one. That's a summer one. In the winter, we get the so-called Santa rally, okay? Now, these had their moment, had their time, Originally, there was some logic in both of them, that sell in May, go away, and the Santa rally, and it was this. Sell in May and go away is actually an American expression, relates to the American market. And what it's essentially saying is that your best bet over a quiet summer period for stock markets is to sell up in May, wait until all the big players come back from holiday, that's the people who work at banks and so on, while their boss is away, the more junior people, won't be authorized to place big buy positions. So the stock market will lull over the summer and then you buy back in uh, in St. St. Ledger Day, technically, which is in 2024, the 12th of September. So sell in May, come back in a bit later in the year. The Santa Rally puts this idea that stocks normally go up just before the end of each year. So why wouldn't you buy then? All right, now, the problem is this. Uh, if it was that easy, everyone would do it and you wouldn't need to think about stock market investing. If there was a guaranteed over the last 10 or 20 years, selling may go away, profit to be had, people would be making it, and they have done the arbitrage as they're called. If it was as easy as buying in early December, selling on the 1st of January, Santa rally, people would do that. But the timing is tricky. People get complacent. They assume that these patterns will just continue if they've seen it one or two years in the past. And when the facts change, basically, so should you. In other words, don't rely on what are, yes, reasonable observations over a certain period for a certain part of the market, but not 
cast iron rules of thumb. Next, never catch a falling knife. Now, this is the idea that stocks tend to, if you look over the history of stock market, stocks usually rise steadily and reasonably consistently, but also at a certain pace, right? But they do rise over time. As I make this video, the FTSE 100 is at an all-time high. The S&P 500 in the US is doing well as well. So they do tend to rise over time, but when they fall, they can fall hard and fast. And just look at the start of the pandemic, the financial crisis, if you go back, for instances of markets falling hard and fast. So the principle here is do not try to catch that falling knife. It's dangerous because you might jump in trying to do a bit of market timing and then get even worse damage in terms of stocks continuing to fall. And the problem is you, know, you may not be able to keep those positions running. You may not have the bottle, if you like, to hold on to a loss making position long enough to see those gains come through. So the trick is this, um, make sure that the reason you are buying is sound. And if you're not sure about how you would ever come up with that reason, then my advice is if you want to catch dips in the market, something called regular investing takes advantage of pound cost averaging. And what it means is that you will catch some of those dips. And the mathematics of it is if you do over the long term, you will do better. So in volatile markets, I recommend drip feeding as an approach because that takes away the stress of market timing, but does mean you will capture some of those dips without trying to pile in when the market's cratering. Finally, buy the rumor, sell the news. All right, now that's a, a simple way of saying get in as early as you can. In other words, the early bird catches the worm. If you spot a story about a new stock, a new invention, a new piece of innovation, jump on that bandwagon early, you'll make money. But two things. First of all, everyone's trying to get in early. The algorithms, the professionals, other retail investors are all trying to get in early and not everyone will. In fact, most people won't. And secondly, I buy data, not stories. And what I mean by that is don't be lulled into the latest crypto platform FTX run by Sam Bankman Free being a case in point. Watch out for biotech supposed early success stories, but where there's no real revenue stream, there's no profit, there's no cash flow. A better approach is rather than chasing the latest fad through social media, the latest story, chase data. So once a company has proven itself, once you can see a revenue stream that is sustainable, once you can see that being converted into profits, once you can see profits being converted into cash flow, then by all means, Go in and stay in. Yes, you won't get in at the cheapest point. You won't be the first person in, but equally, it's less likely to go wrong and you won't be the person that's booted out having over-invested in something that proved to be a bit of a dud. Okay, there's the first five. Second five coming up in video two. Uh, for more information, that's access to other videos, access to my how-to guides. One of them is called How to Invest in Equities and our quarterly magazine, Confidant. It's killick.com forward slash resources.